So this is the Pico 4, the latest and greatest in terms of price and performance. You might be on the fence when it comes to buying this headset, and for good reason. The Quest 2 already has an established market dominance, and the Quest 3 could just be round the corner. Well, thanks to a handful of leaks and hands-on with the Pico, we have enough information to answer the question, should you buy the Pico 4? Now MetaConnect has passed, we know the MetaQuest Pro is out of range for most consumers. So most have turned their attention to the Pico 4, and for good reason. The Pico is cheaper than the Quest, and in ways more advanced than the Quest 2. So to start, what features will be new to you in comparison with the Quest 2, or what we know about the Quest 3? First thing I immediately noticed was the colour pass-through. It's significantly better than the Quest 2's pass-through, and you can even enable some AR features with games such as Fruit Ninja. This just makes keeping the headset on that much easier. That being said, it is a 2D pass-through, so there's no depth to the image, which sounds strange, but not much of a big deal. The Quest Pro's pass-through uses a full color camera to essentially remake your playing space to give the impression of a 3D image. My honest opinion using both the Quest Pro and the Pico, the Pico's pass-through quality is just as good as the Quest Pro and in some ways is slightly better because the clarity seems to be slightly higher on the Pico. The leaked specs of the Quest 3 also confirm this will be the same for that device too, so the difference between the Quest 3 and the Pico could be 3D pass-through, which will allow for more complex augmented reality experiences, which is the way Meta seems to be going with their new headsets. Next is something that I don't understand why all VR headsets aren't doing, and that's effective weight management. The Pico feels incredibly balanced on your head in terms of weight. It feels like it's not there, and this is due to the battery being at the rear. Not only that, it's a significantly bigger battery, about 40% bigger than the Quest 2. You do feel a slight uneven pressure on the front of your face, but that's the way the straps are designed to pull onto your face. The fact that the weight distribution is so good, it's likely this would also be more suitable for a younger audience. The Quest 2 is very front heavy and can cause neck issues. Now unfortunately, according to leaked CAD files of the Quest 3, they're also sticking to this front heavy design. So the Pico definitely comes on top in that department. The form factor of the Pico is also incredibly sleek. The headset is beautiful. And this is down to the pancake lenses. They allow for a thinner profile than the Fresnel lenses of the Quest 2. Going back and forth, you'll notice a slight increase in field of view of what I say looks about a 10% increase. The resolution is also noticeably higher at 2160 by 2160 per eye. But saying that, going back and forth between this and the Quest, it seems like the Pico has a slightly duller colour palette than the Quest 2, which I'm not 100% sure why, as they use similar displays. Speaking of displays, you also have to enable 90Hz, otherwise the default is set to 72. I'd imagine at a 120Hz mode is possible, but just like with Meta, this could be changed in the future with software updates. The Pico is more powerful with the same chipset as the Quest 2, a Snapdragon XR2, but with 2GB more RAM. But the Quest 3 will be in a different league entirely when it comes to chipsets, and that's because, reportedly, it will have Qualcomm's brand new XR2 Gen 2 4nm chip, which will be significantly more powerful than both the Quest 2 and the Pico 4. Now what I think is most people's concern with say moving from the Quest to a Pico is the content library. You will not get the same freedom of choice when it comes to games and apps unless you use the Pico link or wireless stream into a PC. The Quest has had more time to mature, so this is understandable. That being said, still expect relatively big titles such as Contractors, Superhot, Arizona Sunshine and Virtual Desktop. With time, unless it's a meta exclusive like Beat Saber, most if not all will eventually come to the Pico. Another thing I really like about the Pico are the controllers. They are a simple design, but the way the tracking rings are laid out, you don't actually end up clashing them together like you do on the Quest. The haptics also seem slightly more powerful with more feedback. But on that note, they don't quite track as well as the Quest 2. But the tracking is something that wasn't perfect in the early days of the Quest, so I imagine this could also be refined with software updates. So now we know what kind of headset this is in comparison to the Quest and the leaks about the Quest 3. Should you buy it? Well, it depends what you're looking for. If you had a Quest and was expecting to upgrade this year, it's still a worthy upgrade.
trade, but only in the hardware department. You could still sell your Quest and buy the Pico at no extra cost, but you will have to rebuild your entire content library. If you own a Quest 2 and can hold out until possibly end of next year for the Quest 3, then this might be a better option, but expect a higher price tag. For me personally, this headset should be for the people that haven't quite got into VR yet. The price point is amazing, and the fact it's so well balanced with the rear weight distribution and IPD adjustments make this a good family headset to pass around. The Pico software is not where the Quest is at the moment, but given time, the fact that this headset is selling out everywhere, it won't be long before they create their own path and be the Xbox to the PlayStation. I'll be interested to know what you think about the Pico, so drop a comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.